to our second practical in 11.2 Power Factor Correction. Dr. Ken here with you again. In this practical, we're going to be looking at actual currents and what happens to them when we do some Power Factor Correction. But before we get onto it, don't forget to do your uh, hazard identification, your supervision level, your risk classes, and then what control measures you're going to put in place to control those risks. So here's our basic setup and uh, a little bit different to what I used previously. Um, in this particular case we don't have uh, a motor but we're going to use this inductor um, basically as our motor. It is about 168 millihenries of induction we're going to use an ordinary um, digital voltmeter for our voltage, a clip-on ammeter for our current, a wattmeter to uh, watch what happens with the power. So as you can see here, we've also put in a switch and that switch switches in the capacitor. So here's our inductor. L and here's our capacitor C and the switch just allows us to put that in as we require. So as I mentioned before the inductor is 168 millihenries, the capacitor is 20 microfarads and we have a resistor which we're not using this time so we're not going to worry about its value. So here's our basic circuit Our digital voltmeter, our clip on ammeter around here, and a standard wattmeter with our currents in series with the load and our voltages in parallel with the load. As I mentioned before, we have a switch so we can switch our 20 microfarad capacitor in. Our motor is represented by an inductor and we know that it's got 168 millihenries of induction. And we're simply going to watch what the wattmeter does compared to the ammeter when we switch in the capacitor. So the important thing here is we're going to look at our readings and on the left hand screen we have the total current with the capacitor switched out. So if you look at our ammeter here we have 360 milliamps so that's where this reading comes from and you'll note that as soon as we switch it in, so over here on the second diagram we've switched in the capacitor and you'll notice the current has reduced substantially, gone down to 160. So it's dropped 200 milliamps, which is where this value comes in. The important thing to note here also between the wattmeters is the actual power consumed in the circuit hasn't changed. So those two values remain equal because the power hasn't changed. That's an important aspect of power factor correction. We've reduced the current, but we haven't reduced the amount of power that the installation is drawing. In this case, the power is the internal resistance of our inductor representing our motor. So how can we represent this on a phase diagram? So here on the, this phase diagram, you can see I've put in the voltage reference. I've got my current here in my inductor at 360 milliamps at about that uh, 80 odd degrees that we had in here. Then I switched in my capacitor, my capacitor added 
capacitive current in this direction. So the next thing I did was uh, top to tail my capacitance current with my inductive current and then finally I've added in the total current and you can see that came to 160 milliamps and we've reduced the angle from about 87 degrees down to about 45 and we've reduced the amount of current in the circuit quite considerably simply by adding our capacitor in parallel which is what power factor correction is. It doesn't affect the actual power of the installation it only affects the reactive power of an installation. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, Practical 11.2 short sharp and sweet and that's what capacitive switching banks do when they switch in and are used to counteract inductive reactive power in an installation by adding some capacitive reactive power.